Here now, Jim Rickard, Senior Managing Director of Market Intelligence for scientific uh, consulting firm Omnis. Good morning, Jim. You think morning, that uh, the Warsh piece, um, it, it's not totally separate from the G20. It may, have been, it may have been intentional that it came out today, but it's more important than anything that these bureaucrats decide? I think that's exactly right. It's probably as important as everything coming out of G20. And the, you know, the news of G20 is very important, but uh, it can hardly be a coincidence that a Fed governor publishes an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal on the same day that the G20 is meeting. I mean, both are rare events, and I think his audience is as much the G20 as it is the marketplace as a whole. Uh, his, his, this is Kevin Warsh again. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Warsh. Right. The, Fed governor. the Fed governor who is saying the Fed's job is only half out over today. Right. What he's saying, he's, he's giving the market a heads up on the following. The Fed has traditional metrics that they would use to decide when to raise interest rates, uh, you know, capacity utilization, unemployment, a few other things. What he's saying is that it don't rely solely on that. In addition to that, we may look at asset prices. Uh, and that may be one of the signals to cause us to raise interest rates, which is not traditional. The, the question of things intriguing to me is what asset prices, and Joe, I know you said earlier it might be the stock market, it might be an indication that they think the bull market, is, uh, this bull market has longer to run. My view is that it has to do with gold. What he's doing is sort of preempting the collapse of the dollar. If gold goes to 1500 that's not because dentists are suddenly busy, you know, filling people's teeth. It has to do with the fact that the dollar is imploding, and so... Warsh is saying to G20, we're not going to let that happen. Now, he can't come out and say that because the minute you talk about the uh, Fed governor talks about the collapse of the dollar, the dollar would start to collapse. So he's doing it by indirection. But when he says asset prices, I read that to mean uh, basically gold, which is a proxy inversely related to the dollar. Well, you, you know, if, in a perfect world, a guy like you, if you're a policymaker, you get run out of town on a rail. If you try to raise interest rates when unemployment is still getting higher and going above 10%, theoretically, right. if you tried to do it right now, there would be so much populous uh, anger or, or questioning of, of, of what you were doing. But, but you're saying right now that, I mean, you said this off camera, they should have started raising rates six months ago? Sure, to defend the dollar. The, the dollar is the, is the linchpin of national security. I mean, how are we going to uh, you know, conduct a war or are we robust to catastrophic events in a world of SDRs? I mean, what, the Fed needs the dollar to go down by about half over the next 14 years. We have 60 trillion dollars of liability. So that's, you know, that's TARP, baseline budget, stimulus, Ginnie Mae, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Medicare, uh, student loans, I mean, uh, FHA. You go through all the contingent liabilities, it comes to about 60 trillion. There's no combination of growth, no feasible combination of growth and taxes that can fund that liability. We need to pay half? We need, we to, need to pay half. We can pay 30 trillion, not 60. So 4% inflation for 17 years cuts the value of the dollar in half. And that's what the Fed does best. If you had a nickel and three pennies in your hand, you had eight cents. That's the value of the dollar relative to 1913 when the Fed was created. So the idea of price stability is nonsense. What they do is inflate the dollar to sort of prop up the banks. So they need to do that, but that's a dynamically unstable process. So if you try, they would love to do it gradually, and that's the plan. But if, it gets, if the market gets ahead of it, if the market sees this playing out, which they probably will, you could have a very rapid collapse of the dollar. That would be that you see that in gold. What other what other tools does the Fed have besides flat out raising rates? Are there ways they can do it behind the scenes to try and put the clamps on it? Well, they can withdraw some of this uh, liquidity. But what they really want to do is basically displace the dollar with SDRs. And when you mentioned SDRs, people just yawn and you know they're like, "Do what are those? It's complicated." But they're already uh, basically the IMF. This is the unannounced part of G20. The IMF is being sort of anointed as a global central bank. They're, they're run, now running a balance sheet. They've issued debt for the first time in history. Um, they're issuing SDRs. The last SDRs came out around 1980 or 81, right. 30 billion. Now they're issuing 300 billion. When I say issuing, it's printing money. There's nothing behind these SDRs. So, I mean, th this has to do with something called Triffin's Dilemma. It came out in 1960. Economist Robert Triffin said, in order to stimulate world trade and the world economy, some hard currency country has to run persistent large deficits. But if you run persistent large deficits, eventually you go broke. And so he pointed out the dilemma in 1960, but didn't have an answer. Now, 50 years later, the U.S. is getting closer to going broke. We've fueled the world economy for the last 50 years. So how do you get out of that? Well, the U.S. can get its own house in order, but that would cause world trade to contract. So what you need is to kick the problem upstairs. So we're going to use SDRs to fuel the global economy, so that way we can take the dollar off in a corner and depreciate the dollar to solve our own debt problem. So that's the... The unannounced play, but the empowerment. Does that mean that we're no longer the the country that's fueling? A exactly, the and that's the that's called that the um, the new dilemma to replace Triffin's dilemma, which is we have a solution for Triffin's dilemma, which is SDRs, but we don't have a solution for the national security implications of that, which is how we you know if we have to fight a war, if we have a catastrophe, uh, we know that we no longer have this privilege of printing money. We just have another.
currency like sterling or uh, you know maybe worse and so um, so what Warsh is saying is we're not going to let that happen he's saying to the to the other members of G20 look we sort of have to trash the dollar but we're going to do it gradually and if it gets if the market gets ahead of us and you see gold at 1500 or 2000 we're, we're going to raise rates a lot maybe 50 or 75 basis points to defend the dollar my point about doing it six months ago where politically absolutely impossible I agree with that you would get run out of a, a town on the rail but um, it would have gone a long way to strengthening the dollar uh, and helping our economy in the long run. Well, you just made a heck of a case for buying gold right at a thousand, then, didn't well, you? Well, yeah. Uh, but the problem with gold is I, I like gold, and I my you like it at a thousand. Yeah, I recommend to my clients, uh, conservative clients, ten percent gold, ninety percent cash, and that I think gold's a double, and that can kind of you know give you maybe you know, seven eight percent a year for a couple of years with a lot of liquidity and a lot of safety, limited downside. The problem is when you own gold, you're fighting every central bank in the world. Central banks hate gold because it limits their ability to print money. Yeah. But the market is the market. The market will do it at once. And the, even the central banks are not bigger than the market. So Warsh is trying to preempt uh, an unstable decline of the dollar. What they want, of course, is a stable, steady decline. You are better than Professor Robert Langdon at uh, code breaking here. Thank yeah. you. Dan Brooks. We'll come back very soon, Jim. You've got to tell us more Good. about it. Thank you very much.